Salutations, dear viewers, you're on with the next end of the vast nexus, and welcome to Let's Play Super Mario All-Stars. This episode, Super Mario Bros. 3! And if my mic is peaking, it's only because I'm tired of being almost completely inaudible in my own recordings. That's kind of lousy. Oh, and for a little context, this is, what, my fifth attempt at getting, like, a straight run of classic Mario, and it it just keeps not going well. I mean, I'm already off to a bad start because it's hot and it's got my hands sweaty, so I am slip-sliding around on this controller like it just came out of a sink. So I'm going to call this Pro Mode, because why not? I find the All-Stars version of this has more inertia, which... it's not great. I might have to reposition the microphone, it's popping a bit with certain... Uh... I'm... Uh, the word's escaping me, I'm trying to stay in the gaming zone. For what it's worth... Ooh, two for one special. No, 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 a hole. Oh, these, these shrooms are trying to escape from me. It's not cool. I mean, uh, classic Mario was not the hardest. I'd say that distinction goes to Mario 2, the, specifically the original Mario 2 that was only released in Japan until the All-Stars version, which is the game, the version that I'm playing, which was, it became known as the Lost Levels in North America because the Japanese perhaps correctly realized that, hmm, this is actually, like, really hard and super annoying and something that only a hardcore is going to find anything redeemable about, and they were probably right, because I've played and I've never beaten the Lost Levels, but I've played enough of it to know that Wow, what were they thinking? Whoop. Ooh, a life. And if I can get to it before it decides to vanish into the ether. I can't outrun it either, because I'll lose it. Haha! -ha! Pro. Oh. Like I said, Mario slip slides all over the place. My finger is slip sliding all over the D-pad. That can't be good. <sighs> My mic input keeps peaking for some reason. It's the peas. That's why they have those filter things in front of their mics. I... Oh, God. Am I going to have to adjust this? If you hear, like, a, a very loud, obnoxious sound, it's probably me shifting the microphone away from my mouth. So that you're not getting that, that microphone pop. Or then again, maybe I'll just let the microphone keep popping. If I'm going to suffer making a Let's Play, my viewers will suffer in the observation of it. That way we can all feel closer. I missed. Okay, so yeah, he's gonna go back because he's a red Koopa. Yeah, the Koopas were based on Kappas, which are creatures from Japanese mythology that they're turtle-like, and they dwell in rivers and lakes. I, I don't know, I'm not enough of a Nihongo file to be able to make sense of that for all of you. Now, I know for a fact that's a fire flower, which is why I'm not going for it, because I'd be risking the fire I already have for one that I don't need. Cool.
And it wasn't actually Bowser, it was a Goomba. And the beginning of a Mario meme. Thank you, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. Great. World 2. I mean, it has occurred to me that perhaps my viewership is not all overly interested in the work I do on the grounds that it's all old stuff, and I did that deliberately trying to create a connection between younger viewers and the titles which made gaming culture what it is today. Of course, I am an advocate that fundamentally you gain an interest in history as you get older, because younger people don't have much history of their own. They're fresh out of the box. And older people, their lives begin to accumulate behind them, and they become intimately aware of their history, and they gain a greater sense of sort of the history of the world. I knew there was one. I mean, obviously this isn't Genesis when it comes to gaming. Not to be confused with Sega Genesis, but no, this isn't Genesis when it comes to gaming. That can be traced much further back. The pre-home console era where you had to go to these big places called arcades to play games. But, to some extent, this is Genesis in gaming, for me, at least. Um, yeah, I mean, Mario. I'm trying to think, because back when I was young, we had the three classic Marios, and of course, Mario 1 was bundled with Duck Hunt, which I didn't enjoy, because light guns could be a little sensitive at times. The way they worked was not stellar. Ooh, that's interesting. Why, why is that there, though? Nothing above it that's special. Um, but yeah, the classic Marios, the first two Zeldas, which I did not like Zelda 2 like many because it just was too... Uh, I don't know, I have RPGs in the LP lineup, and I'm sort of delaying them as much as possible, because if there's two games I'm bad at, it's probably strategy games and RPGs, which a lot of people would be like, well, given how much of an intellectual you are and your phenomenal memory, why are you bad at strategy games? I don't know. I just know that I am, because I'm always really just getting mulched in strategy titles. And with RPGs, it more comes down to the notion that it interferes with my sort of flagrant perfectionism, where it's like, I want to get everything. But in the context of an RPG, everything is a lot. And you end up in situations where either you're forced to make a choice of one thing or the other, or if you miss something, your opportunity to get it back is buried under hours upon hours of gameplay, and I... I have a complex and non-Euclidean way of thinking. Well, that's not true, I probably... Geometrically, I have a very Euclidean way of thinking. I hate, like, curvatures. Nevertheless... Nevertheless, um... I've played a wide spectrum of old games on this channel, on the grounds that... You know, these are classics. They should not be forgotten. They should be remembered more than remembered. They should be played. Games are meant to be played. And uh, I find that it's just not stimulating the younger viewers because, wow, that looks old. And uh, I want to instill a connection with the foundation upon which society and technology as we know and understand the day today has been built. Oh, that was close. Oh, that was... These levels, man. <laughs> oh, good, I got the 5k. Okay. So yes, this isn't even um, original Mario. I mean, technically, Super Mario Brothers wasn't even original Mario. 
I think Mario's first appearance, or one of the Mario's appearances, if you follow game theory, um, was in Donkey Kong. But if we're talking about a Mario game, the first game would be uh, Mario Brothers before Super Mario Brothers, which technically was for the Nintendo Entertainment System and not the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, so things get a little weird category-wise when you start getting into the meat of that. Then again, in Japan, it wasn't the Nintendo Entertainment System at all. It was the Famicom, the family computer console thing. Cool. Oh. Yeah, it, it's weird the way they've redone his model. It looks like his hitbox should, like, take that hit, but it doesn't because of the... <laughs> his hitbox does not match up with his character model. And that was a Koopa. I mean, these early stages seem pretty procedural, and I've run through them enough times at this point that, well, they sort of are. Trouble is, um, the later stages are going to really start throwing some spanners into the works, and it's not going to be fun. God, that microphone pop is starting to... Okay, well, uh, brace yourselves. There we go. That should avoid the air wrapping around the microphone sensor because of Kanata effect. Physics! Hey, I was able to say physics without the microphone popping. Okay, no bonus. I almost don't even want to go into the bonus because they're not always worth it. I mean, you skip a big chunk of the level, and that can be good sometimes. But... Uh, by some other reckoning and definitions. For one thing, bonuses accelerate your time. Like, that time up in the top right is your life. You run out of time, it's game over. In addition, however, um... Ooh. In addition, however, your time is not linear. So that's not running on a thing of seconds, that's literally just its own in-game time, and it gets accelerated for the rest of the level whenever you find a bonus. And the last hundred seconds of time run faster than the rest of it, so... I, it really stacks the pressure on... There we go. Two bonuses in one stage. Hoorah. Now, this is a full run-through instead of, like, using the warp pipe, because I could have, but I'm not going to, even though this is, like, my fifth or sixth attempt at getting Super Mario Bros. done for a, a recording. And, I mean, All-Stars takes certain mercy upon the player that you didn't get in the true classic experience, because you start with two lives instead of five. In the original Mario, you had two lives. You have five here. And you can restart from the last world you reached if you die, if you get a game over. However, your score, which is not important to me here, but I'd like to get this in a single contiguous run, your score gets reset every time you do that, and... Uh, yeah, we're just gonna try to avoid that if we can. Ugh. See, now, I could have done a thing there where I sent a Koopa flying back at everybody else, but I've tried the cool guy thing. I usually end up regretting it. Better to play it a little on the safe side. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. Would have been nice, but uh, I'm not leaping into the unknown for a Starman. Cool. Yeah, so the All-Stars version uh, made graphical improvements. I mean, that backdrop did not exist in the original game. It was just sort of a flat background. Here we've got parallax scrolling and all of that, what is it, 16-bit goodness? Yeah, because Nintendo was 8-bit. Vintage Nintendo Entertainment System was 8-bit. Then the Super Nintendo was 16-bit, and then... What, what was 32-bit for the Nintendo? Because I know that 
the Nintendo 64 was 64-bit. It was like the whole marketing campaign. Hua. And hua. Ho-ho! That got a little dicey there, but I pulled it together. Yes, this game has a bit of momentum in terms of your character's abilities as well. The ability to engage enemies at range with the Fire Flower is extremely beneficial for helping you survive. I mean, there are certain enemies which can only be defeated by the Fire Flower, like the Spinies, because they can't be jumped on. Of course, there are some enemies which can't be defeated except by shell launches. Buzzy Beetles are a good example of that. I think we've encountered them in the underground, or we, maybe we haven't gotten there yet. But we're not even halfway. World 3-4, 10 lives. Uh, no, no confidence boost there. Those can disappear very quickly. I'm waiting for the lava bubble. I'm not going. Yeah, that's why. That's not cool. Okay, I want to be on... There we go. I'm, I'm not going to be able to flame Bowser this time. I doubt that... Yep, yep, and I'm definitely not going to be able to, even if they give me another... And these two, which spin in the opposite direction, and just set up to ruin your day. So yes, without um, fire, you use the axe. We don't get to find out what he was this time around. I'm not particularly concerned. And now it's three toads! Uh, that also wasn't there. I think it was just one toad each time who said the same thing, that our princess is in another castle. Oh god, a Lakitu world, and I don't have a fire flower. My philosophy here is quite simply just kill him as soon as you can. Oh. The red deceived me there. I thought I had, like, slipped off and was about to fall into the spinies, but it was just a spiny falling down. But yes, Lakitu stages are the worst because I've stated it before that there's nothing worse in a game than an enemy spawner. Whether it's the pain elementals from Doom or a Lakitu in Mario Brothers, enemy spawners are the worst. Just endlessly conjuring more flack for you to deal with. I don't care, I just want to get out of here before Lakitu... Okay, he's back. So, he's gonna toss another one before he gets to me, and then time it right, and there we go. Maybe get a fire flower out of one of these question blocks? That'd be nice. There it is. I mean, in Mario 3, uh, as a testament to it getting easier, if you have a fire flower, um, and you take a hit, you lose the fire flower, but you don't lose your... Super Mario status. You don't go. You don't turn little again, unless you take another hit. So you have two hit points. Here, any kind of hit, and you're back down to regular, normal Mario. So another underground stage. Now, is this the one with that horrible, horrible jump? Yep. Oh. Okay. So. All right. Talk about living on a razor's edge. I mean, it's just... It's one of those control things with old games where they weren't necessarily difficult because the mechanics were difficult to comprehend so much as the character just controlled weird. That's what we have here right now, is that Mario's just controlling weird. Now... Thing is, if I remember correctly, this secret passage is um, a warp, which we don't want to use. It's not even going to let me get in there, apparently. Oh, nope, there we go. Yeah, so I think that's a warp. We're going to pass it for now. Cool. Yeah, Buzzy Beetles are fireproof, so we're not going down there. 
That's death. Oh. Oh. Ha. Ho. Oh. No, you don't. No, you bloody well do not. Dropping me in the fire like that. I'm not even bothering. Okay, what were you, a star man? No, another fire fuck. They're loading me up with power-ups, but, you know, you get into the next stage, and I'm probably gonna lose everything. Okay, so I gotta time this. Oh. That's not cool. And all those power-ups amassed mean absolutely nothing, because you don't... They're just points unless they actually can upgrade you when collected. Oh, this game is utterly without mercy. Uh, on a platforming stage, well, no amount of power-up saves you from an endless fall, so I guess we're just... going for it. My general thoughts with regards to this is that once you die the first time, that's that's when you start running into real problems, and I've even dubbed it NES Syndrome, where each time you die, your frustration increases, and you start making decisions in haste, just because, like, oh god, this has annoyed me so much, I just want it over with. And it also creates an environment of, like, oh, I already died, so it's not like I'm gonna make it without deaths, I should just proceed, you know, such as it is. It's like, oh, that's not a good call. That's not a good call. Look at those clouds just smiling at you in the background, yeah. I think we're actually here. Yep. Going into the castle without a fire flower, and that's not ideal. Uh, once we beat this, we're at the halfway mark. There's eight worlds in total. Ah, uh, the maze. At least this one gives a tone for when you get it right. Uh, originally, you just sort of looped around endlessly until you realized that there was something else you were supposed to be doing. Careful. Great, now that started. Uh, no power-ups. All right. All right, temporary invincibility. Done it. Sometimes, you just gotta take the hit. Yeah, it's gonna start getting difficult fitting more toads in there, I'm just saying. <laughs> 